So, that first video certainly did a bit better than I expected. Honestly, there was more I was going to include, but either due to time constraints or for one topic, some circumstances, I was convinced to just not include it. However, it just felt wrong not to include it since it sort of contributed to me wanting to kind of distance myself from the community. Mostly due to the reactions it got from people, I once trusted and frankly had respect for. So let's talk about 2009 Mecha Godzilla. Admittedly, considering how much happened, my memory's a bit fuzzy regarding every minute detail about what happened, so this will be everything I remember. I talked to him a bit in the Andy Toku Discord server. Never really got to know them quite closely until I invited a few of my friends into that server since they made Godzilla content. And alas, they've become pretty good friends with just about everyone there, for the most part. There were some odd incidents here and there, however. Umcor is a prime example of this. Dude's a weird, sexist grifter. I've been in multiple calls with him where he's been talking about how much money he's been making off his videos. How literally all of this is for the money, and he went on long diatribes about bodybuilding and how women can't naturally be muscular, and some weird nonsense like that. I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt that he was probably just joking, but aren't jokes supposed to be funny, you know? Anyways, this isn't about him. I want to discuss what went down before and after the whole ordeal involving 2009 Mechagodzilla. So me and a few others found out about his actions on Thanksgiving night back in 2021, thanks to another one of my friends talking to someone that worked on Bonds of Blood about how they noticed 2009 was getting closer to said friend. We then discussed how frankly bad he was. We naturally wanted to expose him so he doesn't try any of this towards other people in the future. So we went to the victims and talked things out regarding their experiences. They were initially afraid of coming out about this due to how volatile he could be along with how the wider fandom would have reacted. Because we're such a nice community, right? But we assured them that it would be better to expose him than have him keep their platform, so we took action. We gathered as much information as we could and gradually left him without really divulging why. A bit of a mistake on our part, but in retrospect, the whole experience was a bit of a shit show overall. Few events transpired that led to 2009 leaving Discord, dropping an apology on YouTube, and everyone being very confused on what's going on. So I attempted to reach out to the other members of Anitoku for help and to let them know ahead of time since they of course really liked him and the models he made. Especially the models. <laughs> Naturally, because of the nature of the situation, things didn't go well. Other people found out due to other people involved and forming others on the situation and that nearly led to said people almost ratting them out. Which of course didn't really happen. I mean, there's a couple incidents here and there, but see la vie. Very few people in that server were actually pretty pissed off at us for doing what we did, which led to conversations where I was compared to a pedophile and an abuser, so that's fun. I inevitably left Andy Toku for a good while due to everything that transpired, but came back a little bit ago since despite all of that, there were some people I missed talking to there. We're all on relatively good terms, but after this video, maybe not anymore. But looking back on the entire situation, I never had to deal with something that hit this close before. Like, I've gotten along well with them, even considered them a friend. So of course I panicked and didn't really know how to really cope with something quite like this. Things could have gone a bit better, but the damage has been done and this certainly caused a domino effect that led to many friendships ending on multiple levels and dynamics changing for better and for worse. But they came back. Or maybe they never really left. 
I have attempted to separate these two sides of them for lack of a better word due to how much of a 180 they took upon everyone realizing close enough it's that person. So sorry if it seemed like I was misgendering her from the get go. So anyways, initial reactions were understandably anger and confusion. And it's clear she attempted to completely separate her old life with her new one, seeing how she's making original content now, and more fan art beyond Godzilla, like Sonic and Zelda. But of course, she addressed it in a now deleted doc explaining to her new audience who she was in the past. Response to that was really positive, surprisingly. Though, to be fair, no one really knew of the extent of her actions in the past. Later on, her ex came out with a doc setting the record straight, in which they explained how they were put under pressure to contribute to exposing the doc by individuals who weren't involved in any way with her lives slash 2009's project, further explaining how the document was filled with lies regarding their predatory behavior, questionable slash inappropriate content, and racism. Eventually, they rediscovered her leading to them and the rest of 2009's old friends that were a part of the initial expose to reconcile and move on. Now, honestly, I have thoughts regarding this. Deleting anything regarding context of why they left in the first place is suspicious enough, but this will mainly regard not really clarifying about how everything was a lie. Now I could understand what they simply said it was either jokes or out of context screenshots considering at the time we were practically digging up breadcrumbs for any semblance of bad behavior, but nope, just blanketed everything besides the mistreatment of their staff and conflict regarding their friend groups as nothing more than purely lies. Even if everything else was passed off as merely jokes or stuff that doesn't necessarily have the right context in them. It doesn't excuse the times where they did say the n-word unironically, or tried egging one of my friends on to say it, saying they gave them the pass to do so despite not even being black. You might be thinking, why am I bringing all of this up? It's past. Have you moved on from it at all? Among other questions, but truth be told, I have moved on. I acknowledged our methods to expose them back then were pretty unprofessional and just reeked of desperation to just expose someone for the most minute things in the grand scheme of things. And if I were to change the past to fix things, I would gladly do so. I just want answers as to how things were lies and if that truly excuses the person that did said things because they changed over the years. But I will say. For the sake of archiving information, factual or not, and for the sake of transparency, I do have a copy of the original document that will be linked in the description. I've seen people make the excuse of them transitioning to deflect them of their past actions, and I'll gladly tell those people to shut up. <laughs> There's actually way more things I want to yell shut up to in regards to the detractors of this entire fandom conversation. That the people saying the women speaking up about this are just doing it for attention, they should just suck it up, or they're just leaving because their fan film failed, or all fandoms are like this, etc. Y'all are just pathetic, in my opinion. But I do have way more to say. People have said that we should speak up regarding individuals within the fandom that are problematic, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Kruger McDowell is a voice actor that's predominantly known in the fandom by making comic dubs of Godzilla comics that's sexually suggestive, all the while marketing it towards children, all doing unnecessary ad libs in the middle of his comic dubs, but that's neither here nor there. Anyways, an expose came out from user Ascenti where they go over their time working on a Friday Night Funkin' mod COD vs Tabby, specifically regarding Cougar. They were one of four directors for the mod. Ever since they were promoted to the role, Cougar didn't communicate with either the directors or the dev team unless requested to do so. 
leading to a sentient overworking of Seth. As I hoped, a majority of the team was miners, Senti included. One of Senti's friends noticed all of this going on and made a deal with Cougar, where he prioritized directing the mod and toning down the sexualized thumbnails, which continued happening, as you can really see. You confronted him regarding breaking the deal, in which he gave excuses, claiming his audience are grown adults by now. Alongside claiming gets content as intended for an older audience, yet it's still marketed towards kids. The least he could do is age restrict his video in my opinion, but... but afterward, all of the directors and a large amount of the mod team left, but Cougar managed to get a new director. I told everyone that the issues have been resolved, when in the reality, they haven't. Writing no detail on what happened. Shortly after the document exposing him was released, Cougar cancelled the project, and his reputation has been soured, to say the least. But, a remake of the mod is in development, and remixes of the songs are being created to this day. I will be leaving the document exposing Cougar in the description. Kaiju Zilla 621 is a filmmaker, well known for his Godzilla film series, specifically Godzilla Apex. However, he is an incredibly malicious person, leading all accounts to harass people and surrounding himself with people who do nothing but stroke his ego, even attempting to use them as tools to threaten others who criticize his work. Even doxing an individual's partner at the time over them criticizing one of his fan films, which led to a spiral of drama that's been lost to time for the most part. A particular incident happened at GFS one year, where a former friend of his was dealing with the then recent loss of a family member. Kaiju Silva told him to get over it and made him go and do things they didn't want to do over the entirety of the weekend, even causing them to break down over it. Skylar Kingery is, in all cases, a small member of the family. However, things have been coming out about him recently and someone I know has had a bizarre interaction with them. People who personally knew him, he's according to some YouTube comments, the kind of person who doesn't let go of anything from the past, manipulating fans of his to attack anyone due to what they say about him. One of my friends was harassed by him in the past, forcing him to participate in a roleplay session with his green burning Godzilla OC. Of course, they rejected the offer, leading him to harass them for a while. Methabo Kaiju Fan 97 is a Godzilla animator that creates battle videos and fan films. I would critique his cinematography or the animation in his videos, but I'll leave that for another day. He is extremely egotistic and homophobic, believing his content looks better than the monstrous films. Jado has exposed his homophobia and egotism over Twitter where he makes fun of her for liking Kate Randa and Monarch Legacy of Monsters for honestly homophobic reasons. He also has a long history of copying others' work to make it quote unquote better, re-editing other people's morals and claiming them as their own and harassing people for critiquing his work. Enjoyed a quite long conversation with him revealing his true colors. As well, this is going out, clarify some things and give some updates. The whole Daikaiju Legends thing I mentioned in the last video has actually gotten significantly better over the years, so you don't need to expect any sort of madness like what I went through initially. Also. Expect Ultraman Rising sound effects to come out in the near future, alongside what's on my sound effects schedule. If you don't know what's gonna come out, then either stay tuned or go to my Patreon and or Kofi and check it out. I got some exclusive content coming those way soon, so keep an eye out. Anyways, I think that's enough for me. I'll see you guys later.